I am so blessed this morning. <laughs> I mean, I just look around at all this beauty. I'm just thankful for everything that I have. We haven't had any rain in weeks, but my garden is doing fabulous, fantastic. My sunflowers, my zucchinis and squash and melons, my tomatoes, my peppers, my eggplants, they're doing good. I put a little water on them, but not much. Uh, oh, Jenny Wren's singing away up here. She built a nest in my gourd up here. She's building a nest inside the hanging gourd. My hanging flowers are doing fabulous there. I'm just so blessed. And to answer the question to many people who have asked, what are the cement blocks doing in your driveway? Well, as you see, I have this circle that goes around and out. It's fine for a small compact car, but it doesn't quite fit, you know, a big UPS truck or a FedEx truck. And so when I got deliveries, they were coming in and going around and down at the lower end by the shed, it was very wet and soft down there and they were going off, obviously going into the grass and leaving really deep ruts. So, but it's dry now. I mean, we haven't had any rain. The ground is hard, it's dry. So I took the blocks out for the summer. So if they want, they can go around the circle. And then I finished my project over here, setting up the old uh, sickle bar And put some gravel down. I've got some uh, fabric down underneath to keep the weeds a weed blocker. Uh, but I like it. The only thing it's missing is a seat and we're kind of looking for one but I'm not paying what, what they're asking for on eBay either. Yeah you can see the barn swallows have been here. I've got barn swallows under the front porch and they are relentless <laughs> and they're pooping all over my deck all over my wheelchair ramp e everywhere everywhere they they sit they they poop and i don't want to get rid of them i could crawl under there and knock their nest down but i i'm not like that i'm just blessed that they have a place where that they can raise their babies and be happy I'm getting ready to ride here today, but I thought I'd give you an update about my truck. What's going on with that thing? I told you a couple weeks ago I was having problems with this uh, infotainment center. So the screen here started going all wonky, doing its own thing. And then I also have this little screen here that shows me the speed limit and my speed and everything. And... You can do other controls from that too. You can see tire pressure and uh, the next oil change. Uh, you can do trip meter on that. Uh, but this controls the radio and this controls the navigation and a number of other things. And it just started going all haywire on me. And it was very annoying when you're driving because it would like scroll through radio stations and and the monitor here in front of me would switch to different things. So I took it into the dealer and they had it for a day and they said, we're going to have to keep it overnight, <clears throat> which they did. And the next day they said it was fixed and I picked the truck up and brought it home. I didn't drive it anymore that day, but then the following day I drove it and within 20 minutes on the road, it started doing the same thing again. So I called them back up and they took it right back in the shop that day. Uh, from there, <laughs> it was in the shop for uh, over a week. Uh, yeah, so uh, luckily I had V's car to to get me around, but <clears throat> my truck was in the shop for all that, almost two weeks. And the whole problem was this infotainment center. Now, before they could do anything, they said they had to follow protocol and 
and in doing that they have to follow all these wiring harnesses to make sure nothing is shorted out in the wires and that's a protocol from General Motors in troubleshooting this issue so down here on my <coughs> Uh, where this plastic step strip is they took this off and they actually found a frayed wire under there Which they fixed, but that wasn't the problem They had to pull the whole dashboard and go through all these wiring harnesses And they'd call me every day and tell me exactly what they did and of course It's all French to me because it was all numbers and we we pulled bundle number B5263 and ran tests on it and it was fine we checked all the pins on it and you know it, and it was just a, a a really a long drawn out thing for the technician that was working on it to go through uh, they the rep told me that uh, the technician worked on it every day and just was pulling his hair out trying to figure out what the problem was and the, the neat thing about it too well I don't know if it's neat or not but they can actually plug into the main GM uh, connection and they have you know people that built these things that are supposedly experts that can help work them through these problems they finally came to the conclusion that it was the infotainment center that the whole thing had to be replaced now the other thing I didn't know when I bought this truck is that you may be interested to know that these infotainment centers, at least on this Chevy Silverado, this is a 2018 2500, is connected to all kinds of safety features like braking, steering, uh, transmission, all, all, everything is, that's like the computer of the truck, which is very disturbing. And they told you, because, know, you know, when they told me how much it was going to cost to replace the infotainment center, <clears throat> I told them no I'll just turn it off I'll just drive it without it and they said you can't really do that because that's connected to all kinds of safety features and if something continues to go haywire on that it could put you in a dangerous situation so you have no choice but to replace that thing <clears throat> so they did and it cost me a small fortune I was so mad I I mean this is, truck's five years old. It's got 40,000 miles. There's no way I should be spending thousands of dollars to get the computer fixed in the thing. That just aggravated me. So I went online and I found the uh, General Motors website and I found a contact and I sent them an email. I wrote them an email and I said, you know, I, I love my Chevy truck and it's performed for me in all kinds of situations better than I would have ever expected. It, it pulls my travel trailer, it hauls wood for me, it hauled stone for me. Uh, v and I always called it our Cadillac because instead of saving fuel and taking her uh, Nissan Rogue, we always took the truck everywhere. And once in a while we'd take the Rogue, but most of the time she preferred to ride in the truck because it was so comfortable and she felt very secure riding in the truck because you're up higher than some traffic and you just know that if you were in an accident you'd probably have a better chance in the truck than that little Nissan Rogue which I call the go-kart so anyway I wrote GM and I told them I said you know here's the issue I said there's no way that these things shouldn't be have, have a, a longer warranty on them because they told me I said well it's no longer under warranty five it, it, the, the warranty was only good for like three years uh, so they know these things are going to go bad and then you know I get gouged on it and, and I wrote I, I told them everything I said you know not to mention that my truck was in the shop for like a week and a half I didn't have my truck and that's ridiculous on a repair like that. And I said, it wasn't like it was just sitting there either. The technician worked on it every day. And I said, I'm not blaming the technician. I'm blaming GM for their design and, and using this modern technology that fails. So 
I didn't expect much. I, I thought maybe I'd get some kind of a form letter back. Thank you for your consideration, blah, blah, blah. We hope to continue doing business with you. <clears throat> but no, they called me. Now, when the guy called me, he was like an ethnic uh, from East India somewhere. And he says, Mr. Avery, uh, this is the, the Chevrolet customer service. <laughs> And I, I thought it was a spam call. And I said, what service do I want from you? I don't need your service. And I started going off. And, and I usually don't answer calls that I don't recognize. And I don't even, I can't even tell you why I answered this call, but I did. And uh, <clears throat> he goes, no, 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 no. You sent an email. Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> so they followed up with me. And... Uh, said he was going to re go ahead and review my case <clears throat> thoroughly and had me explain exactly what happened. A couple days later, another uh, rep called me from Sh uh, Chevrolet, from GM, and uh, it was a woman, and she said she was a little higher up on the scale uh, than the first guy that called me, and she wanted a complete review of the case, too. And they said they were going to do something to compensate me, so... Uh, they said they will call me again this coming week, so I'm expecting another call from GM, and we'll see what they do. You know, I always said the squeaky wheel gets greased. If you just take it and don't say anything, you're going to get screwed. And I do that with anything. If I, if I go out to eat, say, and I know it's a reputable restaurant, Let's say I go to Applebee's, and, and I don't normally go to Applebee's. I, I, it's not my place, but let's just say I go to Applebee's, and I order my food, and it's not to my satisfaction. I mean, I know good food, and I know bad food, and when I get food that tastes like it's leftovers or it's overcooked, or, you know, it just has a horrible taste to it, I'm going to say something. And then I'm going to contact their <laughs> main company and let them know that I had lousy service, that I had lousy food, that I expected much more from them. I've done that a couple times. Uh, the last time I did it was with Chick-fil-A. I went to Chick-fil-A, and uh, they totally messed up my order. The service was terrible. Uh, I didn't get some of my order, and I had to go back and ask for it. And then it took them another 15 minutes before they got it to me. So I was not up. I was not very happy that day. And I contacted, you know, Chick Fil A, and let them know uh, that, you know, I'm paying for a service. I'm paying for the food. I expect to get what I paid for, and not less. And and so. You know, what did I get? I got a free coup a coupon for a free meal at Chick-fil-A. And I wasn't looking for that. I just want them to know when their service doesn't meet the standards that it's supposed to, I'm going to let you know. And so I did that with GM, with my truck, and it looks like they're going to follow through with something. We'll see. I'll let you know what happens. But anyway, that's the story with that, so... The truck's fixed now, everything works right, it's running good, and so is the bike. The bike is running like a top. I would think in this warmer weather that it would give me problems, but this thing hasn't missed a lick. Now, the only thing that it does is when I go to start it, it wants to backfire sometimes, and it sounds like a shotgun going off. Uh, as soon as I hit that starter button, POW, and then it starts right up. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I haven't been doing much with the Yamaha. Uh, I've got electrical problems that I've been troubleshooting, but I haven't had time for that. It's summertime, there's a lot going on around here, and I've got these uh, Celebration of Life coming up in July, July 8th, so that's less than a month away, so I've been making all kinds of preps for that. I'm going to have family staying here. I'm going to have family in town from all over the country, so... Uh, 
it'll be a big big time and I just want everything to be in order want everything to be prepared when they get here <clears throat> and it's kind of daunting sometimes when I'm doing this all by myself and I don't have my wife here to remind me or or you know give me tips on hey you know what you should do it's all that's all me now so I'm always like my mind's going 100 miles an hour making sure that you know I'm going to have all my ducks in a row so yeah I've been really busy but thanks for watching thanks for your support I continue to keep you guys in my prayers and I am so thankful for you as my viewers uh, I'm so thankful that for those friends that have gotten to know me personally and uh, some of you I don't really know personally but I kind of know who you are from your comments or from your uh, messages that you've sent me I am praying for all you guys and I appreciate every one of you well it's going to be a beautiful day it's going to be a good day for riding and uh, if you like my video, hit me a thumbs up if you haven't yet. Please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, cats, ride hard and die free.